Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to Subex's investor call. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us today as we share important updates. So, firstly, let's kick off by honing in, our, uh, honing in on our strategic focus. I am happy to share that uh, I've been focused on engaging with our customers. That's kind of been my number one priority. And they have shown significant enthusiasm for the concepts that uh, we have been talking about now, which are, you know, connected experiences, artificial intelligence, and leveraging AI, 5G for enhancing their product offerings. So our strategy involves uh, collaborating with our customers to realize this vision. Um, so what we are doing is we are co-creating products and solutions with them to ensure that our use cases are immediately applicable to their context. So this approach not only strengthens our relationship with our clients, but also initiates um, entirely new discussions that we have not previously explored as works. So this has been very exciting for me. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of my large commitments is also to enhance our product range and offerings that we provide to our customer base. Uh, this will, like I said in the last time, it will also help us uh, reach a larger market. So we are progressing with several partnerships that will propel us forward in this direction. Uh, turning to the business updates, um, I mentioned in the last call that uh, we would do it, uh, you know, against three dimensions of uh, growth, efficiency, and talent. So coming to the first one regarding our growth, I'm happy to announce that we have sustained quarter-on-quarter -quarter progression, as, our, as is evident by the results. Furthermore, I think in this quarter we have uh, successfully onboarded three new clients across our product spectrum. So this signifies that there are opportunities for us just beyond our RAFM portfolio. Um, our commitment to investing in our AI portfolio really remains strong. Uh, we are particularly excited about uh, using Gen AI, Gen AI use cases they are tailored for telcos. Um, a recent milestone includes the launch of our production-ready Gen AI solution in collaboration with Google, which was unveiled at uh, GTW Copenhagen. So as most of you know, this is an important conference that we attend. Um, this served as a demonstration of how Gen AI addresses our customer experience challenges, um, particularly in the areas of fraud management and revenue assurance. Also continuing my commitment to co-creating solutions with our customers, uh, we recently wrapped up a user conference that we held in Malaysia called Connections. So this event was really well attended by all the key clients in the region, uh, which showcased hands-on workshops, you know, unveiling and discovering new use cases. So this is how we have been engaging very closely with our clients. Uh, the second aspect of the update I wanted to give on was on efficiency. Uh, we are boosting our product portfolio by actively investing in partnerships. So while we are invested in developing our own products, we are also going with partnership model, which this helps us optimize our spending and also get our products out to the market much faster. Uh, so this is again, you know, something that we are quite focused on right now. Uh, the third aspect, of course, is talent. Uh, we are making sure that our teams get better by giving them training on, uh, you know, latest developments in AI and other technologies. Um, we really care about them learning and getting better personally. Um, that also helps us grow as a company. So we, and we continue to double down on diversity and inclusion initiatives. Uh, that is, you know, personally quite important to me. And we have seen very good success with our uh, initiative that we have launched. It's called She Returns. Uh, which really encourages women to return to the workforce uh, once, you know, they leave workforce. So we have seen really good results with that. Um, next, I'll cover uh, consolidated financial results for the quarter that ended on September 30th, 2023. So performance highlights, uh, they are with you, but uh, just, you know, for the sake of completion, the revenue for the period is at uh, 768 million as against INR 673 million in the previous quarter. So this is a quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 14%. Um, EBITDA for the period is at 46 million negative, uh, against the negative EBITDA of 147 million for the quarter that ended on June 30th. PAT for the period is INR, uh, negative INR 111 million, as against INR 193 million. And all in all, I think we have registered better performance in this quarter, you know, compared to last quarter. And I see this as a part of our, you know, um, I almost think of it as, you know, we are trying to recover and turn around this. So um, I see a positive momentum, and I think that, you know, uh, we are focused on or committed to delivering growth. Um, thank you for your constant support, as always. Um, I wish you all a very happy Diwali. Uh, we are now open to your questions and comments. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. 
and wait for your turn to ask the questions. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star in one again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star in one on your telephone keypad. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question comes from Mahesh Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Question is related to IoT security. What is your roadmap for IoT security? And are we going to adopt this IoT security product which we have for software defined vehicles because there are multiple projects going in Europe and US on software defined vehicles and the software defined vehicles security is going electronic security is going to be an important element that is first question second question is our manpower cost and other expenses are going up every quarter so are you going to work on reducing the manpower cost at the, and also the other expenses so that profitability will go up? The IT companies should have at least 25% plus EBITDA margin. So these are the two questions. Thank you, Mahesh, for that. Um, sorry, you can hear me, correct, Mahesh? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, no, thank you for that. So on the IoT specifically, so there are two parts, right? I mean, uh, mm. just to clarify it to everyone. So we have um, something in our portfolio which is, uh, you know, IoT focus, which is where, you know, you would be able to do this connected cars and all that. But uh, the one that you are probably referring to, Sectrio, is actually an OT security solution, which is, you know, more industrial security. So what mm -hmm. they do is uh, they sort of, you know, uh, secure... Uh, Maybe, you know, it's an ONG pipeline, it's an airport. Uh, so they do that kind of work. It's more industrial security, but that's not to say that we don't have IoT kind of solutions in our portfolio. That's something that's an active area of investigation and, you know, kind of focus for us. And when we are able to make progress on it, I'll come back to you and tell you more. But um, uh, certainly, you know, um, I completely See, take your point that... Two, three um, years back, in one of the investor, multiple investor calls, uh, Subex management was highlighting IoT security, which they then enhanced to OT security. Correct. See, IoT security, we have a center of excellence in US. We is one of yes. the town, IoT security has been implemented. Uh, yes. So that's what I'm coming to. Actually, huh. the pivot that they made, uh, the previous management made a pivot hmm. to more towards uh, OT security. So we have actually shifted focus. So right now it's only industrial security that they are on. Uh, but technology is same. Technology is same. Technology is not same. Actually, the, hmm. the protocols are so. Uh, no, IoT, original, you know, more original product. Security. Original product was IoT security because we were targeting smart security, smart cities, then vehicle securities. See, one of the first announcement by the Subex was on IoT security for a vehicle manufacturer OEM. Correct. No, no, that was yeah. the case. But when they mm. kind of started, so I, they actually we did develop products on IoT. But mm. then, uh, you know, they found that OT security was a much bigger opportunity actually for them. So the focus shifted to OT. So a lot of protocols that uh, Sectrio is running today is actually on OT. It's not on IoT right now. Uh, the underlying tech, it is, you know, I would say it's common, but, you know, our positioning is more towards OT right now. Um, that's not to say that we will not go back and relook at IoT. That is something because that, see, you know... Uh, there will be millions of vehicles on the road using software-defined vehicle technology. Agree. And they will need all this security. If we are not targeting that market, then what we are targeting? So currently the target is, you know, doing the hard assets. But uh, I take your point on board uh, because this is also an area of investigation for us. Um, and hopefully, you know, I'll be able to come back and answer this question better. But if this is something that's been, you know, an area of investigation. But currently, our focus is certainly on the OT security side. No, um, but for growth, then, we need this tech, this segment. Okay. No, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, definitely, we will circle back with you on this. Um, hmm. um, Sumit, do you want to cover the manpower cost? So, uh, manpower cost, uh, if you see quarter on quarter, the manpower cost remains same. We are able to hold the uh, the cost on the manpower. Apart from that, 
we are also optimizing the manpower cost and See, what uh, is happening our manpower cost is 80% of our sales that is true which is yeah. which is very high no so our manpower cost is including hmm. our one is the r&d function or the product line and another is the delivery line to that okay the so once the once we sold the market so if you ask me our uh, we are able to improve our gross margin in the sense if i go with a delivery cost direct one to one correlation but having said that the whole issue which has happened and which we are in the process is to our uh, we have our top line has actually reduced it for multiple reasons and now we have we are we are we are closely monitoring our manpower cost if you see quarter on quarter it is actually uh, controlled as a cost and further there is a cost optimization exercise has been uh, company keep on doing this exercise to ensure the key talent has been retained and uh, we so we are working on our high level productivity here obviously there is a scope of improvement but having said that the overall cost we are kind of tightening it uh, very hard on the other mm-hmm. cost again it is quarter mm-hmm. on quarter it is it is controlled this quarter we have a exchange uh, fx loss has come up close to 1.8 crores uh, due to the currency weakening on the gbp inr and uh, also the euro ad side so there is a there is a bit of a fx uh, has come in uh, that has gone into the other cost line as fx loss uh, if i just negate that impact then actually it's it's actually reduced as other cost so quarter on quarter i can just comment on that uh, saying that we are controlling the cost uh, on that and obviously the focus is towards uh, to come to the po- uh, positive ebitda side see i my one point is manpower cost if our sales growth is not more than 30% plus or 25% plus and we are retaining the same manpower cost which is 80% of the sale that means there is a complacency in the cost control So it has to come down drastically if sales is not growing either sales should grow so our cost is not like a 100% variable or fungible so there is a it's like a there is a fixed cost of a manpower which you need to maintain and that is a variable component to that so as nisha has just mentioned the the idea is to bring the uh, the top line back and we are just focusing towards that uh, so whatever the lost ground which we did it we are just recovering it back and we'll be maintaining very lean uh, uh, cost management here yeah but see if we are not using ai internally to reduce the cost then cost is not going to come down the most of the testing can be done by ai manpower can be reduced from that front we are taking optimization measures mahesh but uh, you know as focus goes right i mean hmm. cost is definitely bringing efficiencies is one aspect but uh, hmm. you know my focus is on to see if we can grow the top line because i think uh, you know you can do whatever you want on the cost aspect but unless we are very laser focused on top line overall you know the company will not grow. see the top so, line is not growing for last 10 years that means there is but, some serious problem is, in hmm. Uh, but that's what exactly the journey is about right we are trying to kind of you know transform that we are on that recovery and i really want to see if we can make a dent there really do you know because at the end of the day like so much that right there is a certain amount of cost that we will have to carry that will cap out and so top okay. line has to be our focus currently so no from next quarter I'm sorry meeting. to interrupt you sir no no just is a just final point uh, to nisha next quarter meeting after in results can you tell whether we are targeting sdv security or not definitely i'll circle back with you mahesh okay thank you thank you thank you i request the participants to restrict with two questions in the initial round and join back the queue for more questions next question comes from abhishek kale an individual investor please go ahead hello am i audible Yes, you are Abhishek. Please go ahead. Uh, hey, Nisha. Uh, one question. Uh, you said that we have added three new logos in this quarter. Is it possible for you to share the details and uh, uh, like the contract size? If uh, you can share the names, uh, which three new companies we have, and how are they contributing to our monthly uh, MRR? um so i'm not sure um uh, jvk do you yeah hi abhishek uh, so definitely to so once once 
uh, we see that uh, you know that there are rules against disclosure. Uh, right. So we, we can do a broad uh, information. We can disclose a broad information that so that that's what we have did in this call. So definitely, uh -huh. when more specific to it, we we will uh, do a disclosure around it. But I think one thing, um, what is positive about and the reason I even mentioned is the positive thing is that um, these are, you know, in the portfolios that we have been trying to grow. So, you know, all the wins have come from portfolio portfolio areas which are sort of, you know, um, not the ones that um, give us, you know, bulk of our revenue. So we are seeing new green shoots, right? So I think that's the more exciting part for us, actually. Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of report that. Um, Absolutely that, you know, wonderful. Nisha, sorry to interrupt, but uh, if you could spell at least the details on which areas, because I mean, I'm just trying to understand if there are yes. green shoots in which area. So, if possible, please. Could you, oh, sure. uh, so, green shoots are in the areas of uh, network asset management. Uh -huh. um, so, network asset management is something that we have had in our portfolio. I would, I would not say that we haven't had it before, but uh, we are seeing a lot more, you know, sort of, uh, we are starting to see momentum. So, um, so it's in the network asset management and security. So we are seeing, you know, momentum in both areas. Okay. And uh, Nisha, so uh, if I may ask, what are the kind of margins in these two areas uh, that we typically see mm. as a company? So we have a, so basically as at the company level, you know, before we take on any project, there is a minimum margin requirement actually which we have, without which projects cannot be approved or, you know, we don't go forward. And that's Agreed. what's consistent across portfolio. So we don't do it by product. So it's not that, you know, okay. in a RFM I have a certain margin requirement or, and on, so that's just to tell you that while uh, we want to do some land grab opportunities, that does not mean that we will compromise on margin. So margin requirement stays quite stringent. We are quite stringent about that, actually. And we make case-to-case -case calls, you know, if you feel that there is a necessity to sort of make special calls. But again, uh, I would say broadly there is a stringent margin requirement, and we stick to that, actually, regardless of, you know, what area it is. Perfect. Uh, if I may ask one more question. Uh, sure, please go ahead. Uh, it's regarding the hypersense integration. Uh, in uh -huh. the past quarters, I'm talking about uh, Q3, FY2223, and Q4. And in the first qu uh, first quarter, I don't think we had any issues with hypersense integration. So the challenges that we had, I mean, while we rolled out uh, hypersense, uh, it was like a gung ho product that we were uh, everything is sorted out. But then we had implementation challenges. So now. Uh, are those challenges resolved as we onboard more customers on Hypersense? Um, obviously, you know, every product is a, I mean, every product has a roadmap, right? When you introduce right. products, it, the development never ends on a product, you know. Uh, it means mm -hmm. that, you know, new and new, newer feature, features come as and when client requirements grow. So there is a mm -hmm. constant roadmap that we are driving towards on Hypersense. And I would say that, you know, we have been doing well, actually. Um, okay. You know, we have that install base is also growing for us. Perfect. Yeah. So thanks for the update. And one request, if I can make, uh, the, the presentation or the board meeting outcome slides which were uploaded on Exchange. I mean, uh -huh. it's hard to read. It's hard to read. If you uh, if you guys can upload a better copy, that would be much appreciated. Oh. Okay. Um, no, thank you for that feedback. We didn't know that. Um, we'll get that fixed, Abhishek. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question comes from Sanjay, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, you are, Sanjay. Please go ahead. Yeah. So congratulations, Nisha and team. I think uh, we have a good turnaround. I mean, last two quarters, uh, things are getting better. Uh, revenue is going up and uh, margins have improved. I mean, uh, loss has come down. So this is a really good sign and uh, hoping for really uh, better things going forward. My question is about uh, the business. Is it like a seasonal business in the sense uh, the Q3 and Q4, like at the end of the year, the things uh, picks up more or it impacts in Q3 and Q4? Is it because of the licenses or something? 
The question is about uh, Q3 and Q4, are those going to be better than Q2? Is it the increment uh, will be happening on the revenue and uh, margins? So, no, thank you, first of all, Sanjay. You know, uh, it's always good to hear some good feedback. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, as you know, Q3, Q4, for me to make any comment would be a forward-looking statement. Um, but I can tell you that uh, our commitment or at least our best efforts are always to see, you know, how we can do best by our shareholders. You, you have been with us and uh, we really appreciate, actually, all the support. Uh, but specifically on Q3, Q4, I wouldn't be able to make a direct statement. No, only whether it's seasonal. I mean, because many of the IT services companies, the Q3 is uh, uh, probably uh, uh, impacts because of uh, for lows and other things and holidays. But the product companies probably because of licenses and things. Actually, Q3 and Q3. So just uh, what? How the model of your business is it? Uh, so if no, you can just give some information. You are right. Historically, you are correct. Uh, historically, usually, you know, H2s are better than H1s. So historically, that has okay. been a pattern if you go back and look. So we are sure. hoping we yeah. do for that. <laughs> Thank you. And the second question is about the recurring revenue. We are we are seeing that it's a 2.3 million per month. I think the same number was there in Q1 as well. And there is no change, is it? So the more uh, the so this recurring revenue is going to improve going further or this is going to be staying like this uh, for this financial year? Uh, so again, uh, our how the recurring, I, so that I'll just clarify to the investor how our recurring revenue has been considered. It actually starts once our project is finished and then the subscription starts. And, and our uh, contracts are or our uh, products are slightly a long duration implementation phase. So that's how the the quarter on quarter improvement because this is the 12 months MRR kind of a number, uh, and that's what uh, this number you will not show a immediate growth. Once we start executing and finishing the projects, the MRR will trigger, and then you will see it. So this number, which we normally report, it is based on the uh, 12 months uh, how how the MRR looks. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and the last question is about uh, uh, there is no much. Uh, uh, I mean, there is no press release or anything happening. Although like three logos are there since 14 July 2023, there is not a single uh, press release about any new win or new things happening or new partnerships happening. So it would be really nice uh, from uh, the investor community or even from uh, the, your uh, well wishers at least uh, we get the idea of what is really happening. Otherwise, we just come to know only quarter to quarter calls uh, that some updates are there, but not really details we are getting it. So we really appreciate really uh, some uh, press releases about what things are happening and now any news wins or uh, partnerships happening. This is really uh, uh, great. Yeah, sure. No, I will make a note of that. Um, you know, we'll try and be a little bit more active on our releases, actually. Uh, thank you, and uh, all the best. I will be in the queue again. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anja. Thank you. I request the participants to restrict with two questions in the initial round and join back the queue for more questions. Next question comes from Rajesh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Nisha. I will uh, I will begin with the suggestion that if we can have a, a gap of two nights between the result announcement and the earning calls, because we hardly get time to go through the result and sort of be prepared for uh, prepare for questioning. This is too okay. quick. Uh, yeah. So that will help. Have, uh, we have also I usually re receive requests to do it almost immediately, so that's why. Yeah. I mean, I have received requests both ways. Um, okay, it's the first okay, time okay. I'm hearing that you want a gap, but typically people tell me that, you know, do it pretty much the next day. So, yeah, um, because it's a result yeah. season. We have, we have so many results coming out, and uh, it takes time to go through the result and uh, prepare uh, questions. Um, I can't promise, but we'll see what we can yeah, do. Right? Okay, okay. And uh, one question is already answered. Uh, the other is... Order backlog, if you can uh, give some uh, details, what is the current order backlog? Uh, so, uh, so basically, like a few quarters before we stop reporting the order backlog and come with the MRR kind of a number. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that is what it is. But just to give you a sense around, uh, at least from a 
from a 12 months or a horizon point of view uh, apart from mrr we have a one time revenue of around uh, close to a 13 to 14 million dollars uh, okay. that is there to execute and then the mrr meter will start so that okay. is uh, broad as a number but yeah, that is what we stop giving uh, the order backlog because typically order backlog is a is a, it's, it's a three to four year kind of a number which just confuse the investor. So we stop reporting the order backlog number. So I think thank you. These num numbers are encouraging, and uh, we would like to see much better results in future. Thank you for the efforts uh, you people are making. Thank you, Rajesh. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Next question comes from Samir Mansuri, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations to the entire Civic team for uh, a better result uh, Q and Q. Uh, I have two questions, and both are uh, related to the uh, improvement of the top line. First thing is, uh, what are the top uh, three challenges? Uh, and competition that we are facing in terms of our sales, and you know what is our mitigation plan to uh, you know tackle that. And second question is, uh, do we have any focused and aggressive strategy to expand uh, beyond telecom domain uh, so that you know further our top line can improve? Thank you. Um, so Sanjay, uh, so thank you, Samir. Um, so first of all, I think in terms of challenges, I would say. Um, they would be like any other business. I think we are uh, facing, you know, sometimes we have headwinds on, uh, you know, newer technology areas catching up. Uh, so that's where I think uh, we have been very focused on making sure that we are making a lot of investments in, you know, upgrading our technology stack. So I would say that that's, it's a, I would, I think of it as, you know, a positive thing actually. It's a challenge, but it's a very positive thing because it pushes us actually. Uh, so I would say that's uh, definitely one thing. Um, other is, Again, you know, as sometimes the competition grows, we also see some margin squeeze coming in, um, which is something that, again, you know, we have to kind of take into consideration and see how we can, you know, um, work um, on optimizing our cost so that, you know, our margins remain healthy. So I would say those are the kind of challenges that we have had. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we seem to be doing well geographically. Um, in terms of uh, our strategy, um, and, you know, I mean, if you think about uh, the telco revenues now, right, uh, we do have a strategy where, um, you know, right now we want to double down on telcos. We are looking at some adjacencies that's under investigation. And in due course, when we make, a, you know, bets, we will definitely come back and inform you more about it. But just to tell you some, uh, you know, broad numbers, telco revenues today are at around 1.7 trillion, actually. And um, if you think about, you know, they spent, they spent around 400 billion on CapEx and OpEx, right, growing at 1 to 3 percent. Um, so you have quite a bit of headroom, actually, within telcos. So while we feel that that industry is not spending, if you look at it on in terms of quantum, there is a lot of headroom for growth, uh, especially, you know, given our size and where we are, I think uh, there is enough, more than enough for us to do here. But that's not to say that, you know, we shouldn't look at edges and In fact, that's uh, something that's an active area of conversation internally for us. And we have been investigating, you know, what are the areas. We do have some work that we have done in fintechs. This is telco wallets and, you know, that kind of uh, area. So we are also investigating some edges and And definitely, you know, in due course, I'll come back and give you more information. But uh, this is just to give you a sense of where we are. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Abhishek Kale, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, so question for Sumit. Uh, I think three quarters back, we had some issue with uh, some receivables from a particular client. Uh, what are we doing in terms of uh, recovering uh, those dues? Uh, so, yeah, so actually it's not three quarters, maybe around four quarters, sometime like a Q1 of last year. Okay. I might have uh, part of this concept. So, we took a large write-off that time, more about uh, just to control. So, this, this client is sitting into the Middle East region. 
and uh, it is becoming slightly difficult also to uh, collect that receivable due to the existing uh, issues around. We are in touch with them, but uh, to be very honest, we have not done a much progress uh, on this. Uh, though the, uh, though the uh, client is in touch, and uh, uh, there is no, there is no like a sizable improvement has happened. We have, we have even uh, sent them the legal notices around on that. So not much has moved uh, on that front uh, for that particular customer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question for Nisha. Nisha, what has been the changes? I think uh, you said that you were going to make certain changes on the sales side, right? Uh, yeah. Would you be able to fill out the details, if any, as to the changes that you have made or and you are trying to make in order for us to increase our top line? Because, I mean, uh, I don't need to say that, that we need to increase our top line. We have enough to think about it. So, um, so, some of, so some of these changes are, uh, you know, going on as we speak, Abhishek. But I think uh, basically it is to see how we can be, I mean, the goal remains same, right? I mean, how do we become more efficient actually as an organization? And to do a more objective assessment of, you know, where, um, the telco revenues are growing where the investments are happening regionally and hence, you know, where do we need more feet on the ground? Uh, where do we need a front line to be bolstered? So those are the calls that we have been making to make sure that, you know, we bolster, you know, the areas. Um, and we are also doing this differentiated thing on geography because as you can imagine, right, developed countries are on a different track um, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, where the spends are. It's more on data. And whereas mm -hmm. developing countries are still growing their subscriber base. So when you do your product offerings, it can be a little bit differentiated actually. So you don't have to take everything to everyone. So we are actually uh, trying to sort of differentiate at that level and see how we can uh, kind of, you know, make it more, more efficient, but also um, where is it that, you know, AI and 5G have a lot more thrust? Where is it that we are seeing the older portfolio do better? So those are the assessments and changes that have been going on. So I would say it's a work in progress, but um, that's what, you know, in my last six months, that's what I've been doing, actually, trying to, you know, get this thing set so that we have better understanding of, you know, our geographies, customers, spend more time with them. So um, that's what's been going on, really, Abhishek. I mean, I can circle back with specific details, but, uh, you know, um, but if you have, like, you know, something specific you would want to know, I would be happy to tell you. Uh, but, no, yeah, I mean, I mean kind of specifically, I mean, since I'm not privy to the challenges that you guys have at uh, at a corporate level, right? I would not be the right person to uh, tell you anything. But uh, my my ask is simple: uh, Have we identified even the gaps that we have on our sales side? Which uh, I think, from what you are saying, is you are in process. It's a work in progress. So. At least we are on the track, and which I think it shows in the numbers as well. But uh, and we will have to be patient, like you said. Give me two or three quarters at least. So, but uh, the good part is uh, you have made progress from the last quarter to this quarter. So, I mean, rather than cribbing about uh, uh, what has not happened, I would rather congratulate you guys and wish you for the continued success. No, thank you so much, Abhishek. But again, you know, my request to all the, you know, investors on the call is uh, please be patient, you know, because uh, these things do take time, right? Uh, this is a, like I always say, this is not a small boat that you are trying to, you know, suddenly change the course. This is a large ship, <laughs> so it will take some time. But we are in the process, um, and, you know, we are at it. So, uh, so please be patient. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Sanjay K, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, so, so my question is about uh, the headcount in the company. I mean, is it, what is the current headcount? Uh, uh, and uh, was there any increment in the employee count uh, during a Q3? Uh, and uh, are you having hiring plans for Q, uh, Q3 and Q4? So our current headcount, uh, you know, and this may not be a precise number, but definitely in the ballpark it's 920. 920 people. Uh, this is including, you know, onshore, offshore. 
Um, in terms of hiring, I mean, we do it need basis, uh, you know, Sanjay, that goes on, right? As the needs of the business grow, we hire in some areas uh, and we prune some areas. So I think uh, those calls, I mean, that's, I would say, an ongoing activity. There is no specific, uh, um, I mean, obviously, as you can imagine, we are hiring more on the AI side and all that because obviously that's a sure. first area. So, um, so that sure. goes on, I think. It's a business as usual. So where the annual increment done or it will be happening in uh, the uh, coming quarter there? Yes. No, so we completed in quarter two. Uh, that's why there's a increment cost also comes into the manpower cost. Though we hold it the overall employee cost. So effectively there's a reduction in the employee cost, but it is not reflecting due to the increment cost has come. But I'm just saying from a, uh, from a comparison point of view. Uh, and increments are all done, uh, like the organization increments are all done. Our cycle okay. followed is uh, quarter two, uh, so July is our cycle basically. So all the increments okay. taken in July and thing, yeah. Oh, great, I was hoping, I mean that's why I was hoping that probably they must have done by this time. Uh, and uh, the other question is about recently I've seen uh, there is a Bharat ID app uh, launched by uh, the bank. Uh, yes. I guess on LinkedIn it was posted. So what is that app and is it something, uh, what's your plan for uh, that app to, uh, whether it should be a revenue generation or it is just for a user to use it, what's your plan for that? I mean, um, we always uh, do everything with an eye on the revenue. <laughs> so that's the first part, Sanjay. But uh, basically it's an app that uh, helps you manage your all your, you know, KYC in one place. It's like, you know, uh, an app that gets unlocked just by your face, right? So it's a QR code that you can unlock from your feed. It's like a face recognition kind of thing. But more importantly, it serves as, you know, one place where uh, you can give, so let's say that if you're going to a bank, right, and you need to take a loan from a bank, to, I'm just putting it simply, but um, if they need, like, you know, three or four documents from you, you can actually give them, con you can consent to those four documents being shared by the bank, and you don't have to carry a briefcase anymore, you know, with all the documents and all that with you. Uh, this actually lets you give you give consent and authorized documents and only the ones that you have authorized go to the bank immediately. And all this happens without violation of any privacy. So, so this is where we think that, you know, technology is headed and um, we are personally very excited by it because um, just imagine the number of financial transactions that happen which require. And now with, you know, the regime, um, you know, coming to constant KYC, um, we believe that, you know, this should be like a really um, useful thing, actually. So that's what we are excited about. But, yeah, that's what, uh, in a nutshell, that's what the product does, actually. Um, it can also be used for, let's say, when companies onboard employees, right? They ask for your 10th class certificate to 12th or, you know, degree certificate. Uh, so everything that's important can be, you know, in one place, which can be unlocked, and you can pro provide consent. So, uh, so it's that sort of a thing. Yeah, it's really interesting. And so already you have a customer or you are uh, piloting with any customers, uh, this app? Yes. yes, we are actually. And uh, we are piloting with customers to get, you know, uh, oh. feedback to make sure that, you know, we sort of uh, refine. We are doing it with our existing customer base. Oh, that's great. That's great. And and my last question is about uh, the business, uh, I mean, on the business side, like the products, uh, mostly sector and ID central. So the business for that also grew in last quarter. I mean, how the at least uh, the, are you saying improvement in uh, business for security and ID central and hypersense uh, all three segments? Um, yes, actually we are seeing growth in uh, actually the uh, app that I was talking about, the Bharat ID is IDC's app actually. Uh, sector okay. has shown you know heavy growth and so has you know core business actually. So we have grown on all three fronts, which is sort of that's what I was referring to earlier that. When you see growth across portfolio and not concentrated in one area, it's a good sign for us. That's great. All the best for uh, uh, remaining quarters, and uh, we are hoping by Q4 we will be uh, positive. Uh, and all the best for that. Amen to that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next question comes from Raj Kumar Oja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, my morning. question is uh, my question is regarding uh, Subex account aggregator. We had participated into that. What is the progress and whether any commercial activity has commenced? Uh, so we have applied for the license ag account aggregator license. Uh, I believe that uh, that process is still ongoing. 
um, in the sense that you know they have to do some uh, due diligence. There is a decision framework. So I believe we have progressed quite well on that aspect. Uh, but the license is not granted yet. Uh, we are still wait awaiting you know grant of the license. So. Okay. Um, my next question is, ma'am. Uh, in the last phone call, you promised that uh, after one year we'll see real profits. Now, can I say one quarter has passed and only nine months are left? <laughs> I, <laughs> I truly hope so. <laughs> That's, uh, I would not want it to be a moving target, but yes, that's true. <laughs> Actually, we have been waiting for the last 12 years. <laughs> and nothing has been like. No, no, thank you so much for your patience. We, so I, we truly appreciate it. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, your I'm interest invested. is definitely front and center for me. I, I am invested in Sudwest since 29, 12, 2009. I'm wow. so, uh, <laughs> so waiting uh, <laughs> for so long. Anyway, I no, look no, forward. Very grateful to you. Very grateful to you and very grateful for your support. But, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, I mean, uh, definitely the focus is to do right by you. Right and, my by last request, and my last request is, as one of the persons put a question to you, that please keep us uh, informed in between con calls or uh, uh, in the quarter, the progress that you are making on the new licenses that you are winning, so that keeps the momentum high because the company is not doing well. And these little information, they keep us, uh, you know, in a uh, good health. Sure, sure. I take that feedback on board. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. That would be the last question for the day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dur Sabah's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.